Good morning to all. Start this out with a Bible verse, and then we'll get right into the Psalms. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, this is a clarification video for client JK's MS-461 steel chainsaw. Um, I stated in there that it was a low-hour saw, still under warranty. Uh, obviously, steel uh, does not warranty this type of damage, carnage, if you will. This saw was run over by a skid steer loader. Uh, the saw was not running at the time of this accident, if you will. Um, so I took a progression of pictures uh, to assess the damage and to assist in reassembly uh, if reassembly was warranted. Uh, this is the next photo. If you'll notice the pistol grip on the saw, uh, this should be parallel to the bottom portion of the handle and the rest of the saw. Uh, as we'll see in a later progression of photos, uh, it is broken. Uh, separated from the rest of the tank. Uh, the throttle linkage remained intact. Uh, obviously, none of this is lined up. None of it worked. The flange is broken. Uh, the piece uh, that retains the carburetor there, the two 8mm bolts. Uh, the filter cover is crushed. Uh, the filter was crushed. We see it unwound in the lower portion of the photo. And the other half of the flange still attached to the filter and the filter cover. So we see that. Uh, next photo, just a different angle, I have removed the bar and chain. Uh, the clutch cover, uh, the bar and chain were not damaged. Uh, the chain brake was not damaged. Uh, the wrap handle uh, did have some damage on it, but uh, as we disassemble the saw, we'll see that it's still structurally sound. Uh, it was The paint was skinned and the rubber torn on it, but it's still a very functional piece. You'll also notice that I put the bar nuts back on the studs. Uh, this will help prevent damage to those exposed threads. Uh, it's something that I generally do. It also helps keep the proper fasteners with that particular saw. If there are other saws disassembled in the area, they keep everything with that particular piece. Now here we see the flange, definitely broken. Uh, not a real expensive part, but a very vital part. And the intake buffer baffle, if you will, it was not damaged, and it is in the same photo. Here we see the tank housing separated from the power head of the saw. Um, not exactly in order, but this is the separation of it. The oil tank, uh, the crank cases, the cylinder of the saw, everything was intact and undamaged. Now here are the, the damaged items. Uh, obviously the cover was crushed, the filter, flange, the control switch, the control switch rod, and the fuel tank. It was also determined that the tank itself leaked fuel. Uh, so uh, that being the most expensive part of the damage. This particular photo shows where the pistol grip itself was separated from the tank housing. Um, had it been only a leak, and had this been aligned and still attached, we might have salvaged it, but in order to have a functional, usable, safe to operate machine, this had to be replaced. This is the control lever and switch assembly. Uh, the piece in the center that resembles the letter L, that is the fast idle control. Uh, in order to retain the fast idle feature of the saw, this had to be replaced. Also note that the switch housing itself, where the control rod goes into the housing, was broken also. This had to be replaced. Uh, this also a vital part of the 
the saw and the functioning of it even uh, as a safety aspect. Obviously you have the chain brake but you need to be able to kill that engine if necessary. This particular photo shows the orientation of the uh, throttle rod coming through the pistol grip. It is not at the correct angle. Uh, and then the orientation of the carburetor, the plate, and the boot, all of these necessary parts. This photo shows the switch retaining screw on the outside of the saw just above the steel, the wording steel in the side of the tank there, a little small silver screw that retains the switch housing. And this particular photo shows a salvaged piece from the saw. It's been the throttle linkage, the boot, and then the plate that goes on the back of the carburetor that holds all that in alignment. This photo shows the master control lever and switch and the wiring hooked to it as it came out of the saw. Uh, this photo, uh, pretty much the same picture, but again shows the, uh, the brokenness of the pistol grip, how it is no longer aligned as it should be. Uh, note to self. Uh, this intake manifold boot retainer, uh, the top is on the bottom. Very interesting. MS-461, low hour, late model. Note to self, uh, steel MS-461, uh, black wire in the front of the switch on the master control lever, yellow and green wire on the back.